boy, I boot check everybody in Cyberland. It's a fair bow allow. At least I hope so. Um, coming at you from a long waiting period. All right, it's been two months, maybe even more, that I've done a video, but I'm back on track. Been super busy um, getting uh, through this new year. Right, when we looked at the letter año for Miami, we saw Dura Gunda, and we had to begin to kind of resonate. I want right needs to look like spiritually, better align ourselves and better get to where we need to get to, um, to ensure that we're doing the right things. And that includes me making sure that I'm doing the right things for my spiritual house, my ile, and making sure we get back to some of the fundamentals, some of the basics, because that's what matters. So without further ado, um, I thought that it would be very beneficial to get back to some of the foundational aspects of this faith to better understand where we're going and how we're going so that we can better transition throughout this year and deal with the struggles that are to come. Because as Otura Gunda said, you know, this is our time to kind of get our stuff in order, right? So we can avoid the struggle, but a struggle will come nonetheless. And we have to be prepared to reinforce our lives spiritually so that we can ensure that the balance between physical and spiritual life is maintained. So I had the unique pleasure um, to go and travel, right, from where I'm based out of um, right now. You guys all know I got a career. Um, and I traveled to Tampa recently. And I did that because I wanted to spend some time with my godfather. I wanted to spend time with my elders. And I wanted to kind of just make sure that, again, I get down to the to the fundamentals, the foundation of what right looks like. But more importantly, um, as I began to do that, you know, I'm visiting, you know, my, my elders. And I'm talking to other Babalaos. And, and it felt good, right? It felt great, right? Because that is the key. That is a key of ensuring that, you know, success happens in everywhere you go. And a lot of times, you know, we look at, you know, many of the old dooms and we try to talk about the transformation that someone takes that they have a spiritual path or a spiritual journey. And, and we don't resonate enough on where we came from and where we're going. And that is going to be why I am doing this video the way I'm doing it. With the term and the premise of Ifa and etiquettes, some of the foundational etiquettes of our belief system, some of the foundational etiquettes that's going to make your warriors work better, feel better, make you produce better. Right? When we talk about some of those fundamental things in life like love, prosperity, blessings, tranquility, stability, those are the key aspects to life. That's what's going to make you walk better, feel better, and be able to connect better spiritually and physically. So um, before I jump right in, I want to say thank you. I saw two, two of my viewers while I was in Tampa at my Godfather's Botanica. Um, they recognized me from YouTube, and, and it was an honor. Many blessings to them, so you know who you are. So thank you for always tuning in. Um, so I wanted to first start by saying that foundationally, in this faith, we have to remember who is Eshu. We understand that fundamentally, Olodumari created light from the dark, when he created the universe and all things as the creator, right? The single creator. Um, and when we look at that, we have to resonate on, okay, what was the darkness? What was the void? And we begin to see in Obe, in Obe Owani, right, that Eshu is everywhere. And Eshu manifests in many different forms. Eshu has the ability of transformation and can be whatever he wants when he wants. Right, but we have to look at that as a foundation. God creates light, but there's this darkness that can never go away. It's always going to be there, whether it's your shadow, whether it's Orun, the ancestral plane, whether it's Olorun. There's always some form of a double or a parallel universe or, or however way you want to kind of look at it to say that this is where we're going and how we're going, but we need to understand that foundation first because it's it's the beginning. That is the beginning. And that beginning is Eshu. That's why we always give thanks to God, right? For being the creator, for being the single God that we that we employ. But we also look at Eshu as God created the light and, and created the universe. Eshu was there. And God gave Eshu 
the orders of ensuring because he created the light from the darkness that Eshu was always present. Eshu was always attended to. Eshu was the enforcer. Eshu understands Olodumari's and Olodumari's vision. And that's why Eshu opens, closes doors. Um, that's why he's the enforcer. That's why Eshu, right, um, it has has the ability to be whoever it, it wants to be, right? It's not even a he, it's not a she. It's Eshu. That's the reason why for each and every one of you who have Eshu, you want to keep Eshu well entertained. You want to make sure that you have Eshu with palm oil. You want to make sure that Eshu, you're giving him his proper dues. Uh, make sure you're attending Eshu the way your house taught you to attend Eshu. And that's in the sign of Ombe Owani. Um, and that's very important for us to remember. Okay, now we talk about Otrupon Ika. Otrupon Ika and Iwuri Mei are signs to talk about what do we do with Eshu, right? As a fundamental divinity in our lives, we know we got to attend him. And I will tell you that on Otrupon Ika and in Iwuri Mei is the reason why I, I tell my God children a lot of times, take your Eshu with you. If you're going to go before, perform something spiritually, you're going to go to the river, you're going to go to the ocean, you're going to go to the woods, you're going to go attend something, bring your Eshu. Because Eshu lives outside, he lives inside, it's the same, you know, old dudes that kind of tell us, you know, he lives behind the door, he lives in front of the house. And you begin to kind of see that Eshu is just everywhere. Don't get your head wrapped around on some of the technicalities more than understanding Eshu lives everywhere. Make sense? Okay. Now, as we begin to even dig in further, right, we understand that um, the fundamental aspects of our faith also lies with the 16 Mayis. We understand in Ifa, in consultations and also days that you receive, you have 16 Mayis, the 16 kings, right, the disciples of Urumila. Right, and we understand that through certain stories and certain old dooms like Oshetura, that you know there is an aspect of an APTB, a female energy that's there, right? And I tell you this, right, because now I'm bringing in two things. I spoke to you about the darkness and the light, right? Light was created from the darkness. I also mentioned to you the inside and the outside. Eshu can be inside or outside. Now I'm mentioning you a female aspects. Of this faith, which is how in the Odum Oshetura, we didn't give presence to Ochung in this sign. And the 16 kings, the 16 maids could not make the work happen without the presence of that female. And eventually, between the union of Orumila and Ochung, a baby was born that was called Oshetura. Which is what brought Ache to the world. Because now... Because of the union between feminine and masculine energy, we now were able to produce blessings in our world. So we look at those things as well. And there's a common theme, a common theme, right? And foundationally, some of the etiquettes that you need to always have in the back of your mind, some of those standards foundationally is balance. Balance. Male, female, white, black, yin, yang. Chakra, which talks about the alignment of many different angles in your body, but everything comes down to a balance. And that's something that you have to live with. In addition, when we look at, you know, some of the aspects of our faith, we have to begin to understand where we're going and who we are. Again, this video is designed to kind of get you into the mindset of etiquettes and foundational studies. In our foundational studies, we understand Orumila is the prophet. Orumila is who the Babalaos are priests of. Who is Orumila? Orumila is the one that interpreted and captured God's vision. How? Because he was the witness. Orumila was witness to creation. Orumila was there when the breath that God put into mankind occurred. Orumina understands destiny and spirit and where things are going. That's why Orumila is the Orisha of wisdom. How do we gain wisdom? We gain wisdom through knowledge and understanding. And that's why it's very important for us to understand that we don't do things blindly in this faith. This faith is not about let's go do something without the proper techniques, understanding, and knowledge. And that's what the Bawalaos bring to the table in order to perform 
the sacraments or the uh, bowls or the ceremonies, initiation, etc., that needs to be performed. So that's that's the other piece. Who is Orumila in Ifa? Understanding who that person is, right? That Orisha or Eremole, depending on how you look at it and from what angle, we understand that knowledge, understanding brings wisdom. Orumila is the wisdom, and this is why everyone should be going to a Babalao for a consultation at least once a month to see where do you sit, where are you going, how are you maneuvering. All right, and if you can't go every month, then maybe every other month. But you have to get into a routine to see where you sit spiritually. Additionally, I said go see a babalao. Here's where things get a little tricky. You need a babalao in your life, one way or another. I tell people all the time, you need a babalao. You need someone who manages the eggungs, a medium, a spiritualist, however way you want to look at it. And you need a olorisha. Right? A santero, santera, somebody who manages the orishas very well. When you have those three in your back pocket, those priests and priestesses, you begin to build a spiritual empire within yourself in order to attack all problems from different angles. Right? That's very important for you to understand. But how do you pick these spiritual leaders? This should be a strenuous process. This should be a very difficult process. This should be a process where you are putting those priests to work. You are, hey, give me a consultation. Hey, what's the Ebo? Hey, what is the Ebo designed to do? Okay, do the Ebo. Okay, let's see if this Ebo manifests in my life or not. And if it didn't, let me go back to that Baba and ask him, hey, look, we did the Ebo, nothing's happening, what's going on? And you can better navigate to see if, is this a person that you can work with? Is this a person that you can learn from? Is this a person that you want to be your spiritual leader? Switching out spiritual leaders is not advisable. Why? Because it's like your doctor, right? When you first go to a doctor, they need your medical records and they got to screen through your records and it's a long, strenuous process. And in that process, they learn who you are and they walk you through your life medically and they know what works, what doesn't work and what feels right. Because a spiritual leader has to understand the person that's in front of them. That's why once you go into an ile, make sure you pick the right one. Because if you have to switch out later, it becomes a little bit it's like almost like starting from scratch to a certain point because you got to get to know the person. You got to get to know where they're going. You got to understand how they're going to work with you. You got to learn the teaching, um, you know, capacities um, that kind of guide what you do and how you learn. Right. Um, so all those things matter. All those things matter. And then what's the plan for you? Don't walk into this faith without a plan. You should have a plan. You should say, hey, you know what? I'm going to give a mano a rula so I can understand destiny, so I can understand my ori. I can understand how I'm going to walk, how I'm going to talk. And because now I, I, I pick my spiritual leader, I want to know what's my roadmap. What does my roadmap look like? And that's the, another conversation that needs to be had. right? Not everybody's destined to be an olorisha or a babalao. Um, and some people don't necessarily have that as a mandatory requirement, but some people do. And those who don't have it as a mandatory requirement have the luxury of saying, you know what, uh, I would like to go get crowned if they choose to. And what does that mean? And how does that look like? And how does that interact with their life and the life sign that comes with your awofaka or your ikofa and your guardian orisha? Right. So now let's talk about that. So now you understand there's a balance in everything we do. Now you understand knowledge, understanding equals wisdom, which is Orumila, and that's what the, the Ifa brings to the table. Now we understand that um, we, we picked our spiritual leader, right? We did some work there, and we kind of picked the right person. Now we got to understand why this thing called Awufaka and Ikofa. And, and this thing called Awofaka Ikofa that happens to happen with the priests of wisdom, which is Orumila, right? Through Baba Laos. Baba Laos are the priests of Orumila. We begin to outline your spiritual path. To be tell you who you are, what you are, what your guardian Orisha. What are you destined to walk in this world before you do anything? I'm going to give you some very strict advice and, and, and please forgive me. And I'm not here to offend anybody, but I need you guys to all understand this. Your first passage in this faith should be through Ifa. So if I can tell you who's your guardian Orisha, your Orisha or Batori, right? Who are you by an Odun, a sign that signifies you? 
along with a prophecy that reads on you that tells you how your life will begin to unravel and how your life is going to be best managed. And through that process, you can outline whether you want to go to the land of Ocha and receive collares and, and go get crowned or whatever it is that it works for you and your Odum, your guardian Orisha, your prophecy, all mixed together will equal a route for you to follow. That's why you have to receive your mano de orula. You have to do it. And for those who have already been in their journey for a while and don't have mano de orula, go receive your mano de orula. See what Ifa has to say. Very important. No different than any fa, the Baalaos should see what the Orishas have to say. So, what does this do for you? And why do you receive Mano Arula? Should be clear as day right now. Okay? Because that is your way of learning, your way of expressing, uh, or your Ori expressing its ability to want to manage and deal with what is to come. Because remember, in this faith, right, your awofaka and your ikofa, right, is your ori trying to get back to its destiny. To complete its job here, which is orisha aie, the earth, which we are only here visiting. This is a marketplace for humans. We all want to go back up to Olorun, which is home. And for some of us, we will go to Orun as ancestral spirits to assist mankind. Those are aspects of our faith. And I will even throw a third aspect on there that some of us will reincarnate. Atunwa, right? The reincarnation aspects of things. Now, we have a firm understanding of Mano de Orula. Now, let's talk about the aspects of the diaspora, right? In our faith, we believe heavily in mediumship, spiritual misas. Where does that take us? Why? Because we believe that in our heads, you notice I already talked to you about Eshu. Eshu's with everybody. Just to let you know, your Ori came down with an Eshu. Every Orisha came down with an Eshu. Eshu is in everything, right? The master transformer, right? So now, Eshu comes down with everybody. So if your head, if you were to break your head down into a quadrant, you notice I put a cross, a cross meaning the directional sides, right? North, south, north, south, east, west, right? So when you look at those aspects of things, um, you start to see directional course. Winds, compasses, where are we going, how are we going? Not that a cross has to do anything with a religious aspect, but it is a representation of Eshu, right? So then when we look at that, we look at our heads and we break it into four quadrants. Let's go back to the head, right? Those four quadrants is Eshu, your Ori, your spirit guide, right? And your Orisha Batori, right? So you have those four entities that live in your head. Right, And that's the reason why spiritual misas are very fundamental in this faith. We need to understand what are the eguns talking about? Where are the eguns taking us? Who walks with us? What is our cuadro piritual, which is our spiritual framework, um, so that we can better honor them so they can best help us in this world as we travel through this marketplace. So spiritual misas are super fundamental. All right. Something else that you're going to see in this faith that is super fundamental is that no one can escape receiving a local. Each and every one of you had to receive a local. You want stability. You want health in your life and you want to prosper by learning the secrets of the depths of the ocean. You do that by receiving a local because a local is the one that's going to give you a lot of that stability and health. Right. And if you're lucky and if you're lucky, he blesses you with what you need in life in order to to prepare yourself for further further journeys. So that's why our local is a must. It's a must. So you see how you start to work through this faith. You begin to kind of see spiritual misas will happen. Or local happens. Consultations every month or every other month happen. Your mano de orula has to happen to better understand where you're going. You understand that life is balance. Right? Now we get into the aspects of a boss. And balls and initiations are obligations. Don't enter this faith if you don't expect that you're going to be able to do it bosses. It bosses come in many different shapes and forms. You got to do it at the moose, which is fruits, vegetables, organic type materials that you can clean yourself with or present or give to the orishas, the energy of this world, the nature of this world, eshu, orumina, whatever it is that you got to give. That's an adimu, right? And maybe sometimes those adimus, you're going to cook them. 
right? And then we're going to make obras and we're going to get some ingredients together. And we're going to do things to best entice those energies and bring some of that goodness into our lives because it's missing. Sometimes it's an iyebale. Maybe we got to do things with animals and we got to cleanse ourselves from some negative forces in our lives. Maybe we got, you know, an evil eye on us or or maybe someone is, is actually doing something, you know, to the aspect where we call brujeria, witchcraft on you because for whatever reason, God forbid, right? But those things happen. We got to be realistic. This ain't sunshine and butterflies, right? It's not going to be like that all the time. And we got to remember that. That's why bulls are important. That's why we have to know, understand the obligations that come with entering this faith, this land of Ifa. Welcome to Ifa. What does that mean? And how do you navigate through it? And then for those who, um, you know, have the obligations or, or have the passage to go get crowned one day, you will have another Ita. And Ita is the message that God wrote out for you, right? So when you got your mano de orula, you got your Ita. Right, from your Odun, your Orisha Batari, your prophecy is all put together, and your godparent will tell you all that stuff that is seen through Ifa. What does Ifa see? Right? And then when you get crowned, don't ever forget your mano de Arula sign. And if you go to become a Babala one day, don't ever forget that sign that brought you to the feet of Ifa. Because all those things are important. But as you transition, right, as you transition, you have to have a deep understanding of where you're going. Remember, everything is knowledge, understanding, and with that equals the wisdom. So as you transition in this faith and as you begin to kind of work through things step by step, it's very important to always have patience, tranquility. Remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. So just because you receive every divinity in a year does not make you any better than anybody else. And if not, it probably complicates your life a lot more. Then if you just took your time and every year you maybe received the divinity, every year you reinforced yourself, right? Because that is necessary. Now, sometimes you're going to have to receive things ASAP because that's what he files marking because we're trying to get you back in line. But that is important. Additionally, in this faith, we respect our elders. Our elders are foundations. Our elders are who we stand on, right? There's an old saying that we stand on the shoulders of giants, and what does that mean? That means that we have to respect those who came before us. Our elders have a wealth of knowledge that we have to preserve and we have to learn from and we have to stay next to them. All right now, additionally, in this faith, there comes obligations, right? You have to learn how to attend your eggums, attend the orishas that you have, attend the rumila. All those things matter. And lastly, if you're going to join this faith, you need to learn Right? Fundamentally, what is the proper greetings? If you see a babalao, iburu, iboya, ibu cheche, it's the proper greeting. You point to the ground and give thanks to the nature. Then you go ahead and you touch your ori, or you can touch your stomach, which is another portion of your ori, right? And you give the proper homage. Remember, touch the ground. Let your arm extend past the knee. Or you can actually touch the floor with your hands, your right hand, iburu. And for me, I touch my belly, iboya, ibusheshe, to represent all three aspects of my ori, right? But I also give thanks to the ground. And that's how I honor my fellow babalaos. That's how I honor my godfather, right? And that's very important for us to remember. The stomach and the head. And in your feet, there's another portion of Ori that I don't necessarily want to jump into, but it's very important. Remember, my farafum Orishas. When we look at certain homes of Orishas, we have to remember that we have to give homage. If someone comes to your house, I would hope that you would want somebody to open your door and say hello to you. Or do you just want them to walk on in and not say anything to you? That's why we say my farafum Egum, if I'm at the cemetery. Ma farafum oya, if I'm at the gate of the cemetery. Ma farafum elewa, if I'm at the crossroads. Ma farafum ogun, if I'm in any path at all, because that's what ogun did. Ogun created the paths. Ma farafum ochosi in the woods, or chango in the woods, chango in a palm tree. I mean, the, the, the list goes on and on and on and on. You got to learn those things. That is fundamental. Those are the etiquettes that I need each and every one of you to learn. So, I'm glad to be back. We're going to start hitting it hard, right? I'm, I'm in Miami now because I'm doing a plante um, for Rumila and a plante for Locum. 
out of control. A lot of busyness out here. I think I, I picked a bad time during spring break to come out here. But <laughs> here we are, and we're making it work. In the name of all that is beautiful, Olodumari, Orisha, Eguns, Orumila, Always, and Eshu. Right? More love to each and every one of you. Thank you each for every one of you for tuning in. Much love to each and every one of you. And expect more videos coming. Long overdue. Iburu, Iboya, Buchiche.